Well, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, if you have your Bible, turn to the uh, book of Matthew 24. Book of Matthew chapter 24. Uh, last time I was with you, I mentioned that, uh, that I was going to speak on some prophecies. Well, I'm going to probably just do one. I may do two. There's three on my heart right now. It's going to depend how long it takes. If I can swiftly go through this real quick, um, we'll do three. If not, we'll cut it back to two. But I'm kind of on a timer. This is my third time to do this, and I keep going too long, and I want to give you short videos. But I, I want them to be comprehensive. I want you to have a, a firm foundation on prophetic things. Uh, Matthew 24, are you there yet? When you get there, say amen. Okay, here we go. Uh, chapter 24 of Matthew is dealing with the um, the latter days. The whole chapter is really a uh, discourse of Jesus giving one answer to um, a, a question given by the disciples. Okay, but his answer is multi, it's broad, wide answers. Uh, it says there in Matthew 24 about verse three. The disciples asking him, uh, when's all these things going to be? He's been talking about the end of the world and uh, problems coming, famines are coming, earthquakes are coming, diverse things, are, all kinds of uh, issues are coming, pestilences are coming, and uh, the temple being destroyed earlier is talked about. So they, they want to know when's this going to happen. So they asked for one sign. Look at verse 3 there. So what is the, the, what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now they, they want the sign of his coming. Okay. Don't be confused thinking that it's about the rapture. The sign they're asking for is the coming. When you come back to the earth, they knew about that in the book of uh, Zechariah. said he'll come down to the Mount of Olives and the mountain will open up and he will enter into the city. And uh, he'll rule the world for a thousand years and the Jews will cry out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They knew about the second coming, so they're asking about the second coming. The, the, uh, the rapture is a mystery. And it's not spoken about a whole lot until Paul comes along, the apostle to the Gentiles, like you and I, to the church, to the bride. And so Paul delivers us this mystery of a, of a Gentile uh, bride joining in with a Jewish bride being married to Jesus. You find it in Romans 7, 4, matter of fact. Uh, you're dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another. So it's like we're married to the law, then the law dies, and now we get married to Jesus. That's Romans 7, 4, also in Corinthians 11, but we'll, we'll go on. Matthew 24, verse 3. What is the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Now, some will say the end of the age. Well, whatever. Whatever you want to put this. Fine, I guess. Whatever you want to do. But he's asking here, what is the, the sign? Asking for one. Just give us one. And it's like Jesus is wanting to just pour it out. And instead of just giving one, he, he gives a boatload, son. He, he lays it out there. And, and begins to tell him about, uh, again, earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, he talks about uh, Israel being a fig tree. Let, watch that. He talks about, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, and eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. All sorts of signs. And uh, Jesus just, just lays several things out. We're going to grab one or two here real quickly, and I'll be done with you, okay? I pray God's blessings on you. And listen, don't be afraid of prophecy. Uh, we need to be studying this. We need to be preaching this. Um, a third of the whole Bible speaks of prophecy. So why aren't we hearing that much in the pulpits? Why are the pulpits silent? Why are the preachers silent? Why are the evangelists silent about, silent about pro, uh, prophetic things? Things are coming to pass every single day. And we're quiet. We're not studying up to see what God is doing. He wants us to know. And we need to read the signs and know what God is saying to us. So now, follow with me now. Verse 4 Jesus gives a sign. He gives one sign. One sign. He gives a sign. It's just, it's just like it's going to just break loose. The dam is going to break. Jesus says there in verse uh, verse four, he'll say, uh, well, "Well, these Christ, these false prophets will come, and they're going to deceive people." So again, he's going to lay out a lot of stuff here in this whole chapter. But he begins the first thing out of his mouth is deception. So in my spirit, I'm saying, okay, that might be the most important thing. So you can start with prophecy is just kind of looking around, turn your TV on, turn your radio on, or read some of the books down at the bookstore dealing with last days, and you see some kooky stuff. You see some silly stuff going on 
in the name of religion, in the name of Christianity many times. Because this deception is not being deceived like they're going to pull a rabbit out of the hat or, or throw the little ball in the, under the cup. That's not the deception that this is talking about. It's talking about religious deception. So if you're taking notes, write down uh, sign the end of the days, uh, uh, prophecy is being fulfilled is religious or spiritual deception. There's four times this word deceive or de deception is going to come up in this one chapter four times. Verse 4 there, if you're looking at it, verse 5 repeats it. Verse 11 is going to say something about the same way. And then on down in verse uh, was it 24, it's going to repeat it again. Four times Jesus thinks it's necessary to tell you and tell his disciples and tell the world that the sign of his coming and the sign of the end of the world is religious deception. There in verse 4, false Christ. Look at verse 5. For many, many, be a bunch of it, many uh, will come and say that I am Christ. And, and, and later on down, uh, about verse, uh, where is it, about 36 or so, it's going to say, that they'll, they'll say, well, he's out here in the uh, wilderness. Don't go out in the wilderness. Jesus is not in the wilderness. Some will say he's out there. Uh, don't go out there, out, out in the city. He's not out there either. So there is a religious deception that's going to be going on in the last days. And it's a sign of the end of the world and the coming of the Lord when he comes back to rule for a thousand years, which is seven years after we're raptured out of here. So if we're seeing this stuff happening right now, which is going to happen seven years after the rapture, we need, we need to just use common sense to know that the rapture is close. Don't know how close, but let me tell you, it's close. And the more we're going to look, this, this is the foundation. Some of you preachers out there, my buddies, y'all have already been here. You've covered this. You, you know what I'm talking about. So just bear with me as I try to get everybody up to par. We're all just on the same boat, on, this, on the same page, okay? Religious deception, verse 4. Religious deception, verse 5. And then verse 11, and he repeats verse 5. Many will come and say that they are Christ. Many, and many will be deceived. So not only would there be a lot of false Christ, there's going to be a lot of people that are just faked out. I mean, completely clueless. A sign of the, of the end. Look at verse 24. There is talking about something that I'll, I'll, I'll do one Bible study on that before it's over with because it's really important to me right now. I'm studying this, have been for about three years. Haven't got to the bottom of it, but I've dug up a lot of really neat stuff on this. Um, dealing with the abomination of desolation, which is coming on up in about verse uh, 29 or 30 or so, or 28, I think it is, 29 30. But anyway, it says there um, that this deception that's coming, these false Christs that shall arise, these these uh, false preachers, these uh, these uh, wolves that are in sheep clothing, so to speak, clothing, so to speak, their deception is so good, so cunning, so wise, such a con, that if it were possible, now it's not possible, but if it were possible, they should deceive, there it is again, deceived the very elect. If it were possible, they would deceive. The very elect. In other words, if it were possible, they would deceive Peter and Paul and James and John and Matthew and Mark and Luke and all the early church and you and, and me and us. It would deceive the church. It would deceive the very elect. That's what's coming. See, this is all the build-up. This, this, this is the prelude and it's coming. The main event's coming. And we're seeing that right now, aren't we? Deception. Now, I want you to grab something with me real quick on verse 32. Jesus brings in several things here to, to bear, okay, um, dealing with prophecy. Now, listen, a third of your Bible is prophetic. One out, of, one out of every 25 verses deals with prophecy. Um, out of 260 chapters in the New Testament, uh, the, 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 uh, the teaching of the coming of the Lord, whether it be rapture, or whether it be the second coming when he rules for a thousand years, but the teaching of the coming back of the Lord, whether in wrath and judgment or to take us away, 318 times is talked about in 260 chapters. 23, 23 of the 27 books in the New Testament speaks or refers to a second coming of the Lord. And we're not talking about it. We're not preaching about it. 
just hardly anywhere you go. And some of the books you find, they're way out in left field, and they know they're out in left field. There was a book came out uh, in 2015 about the blood moons. It went all over the world. It made one of the big, big sellers, and that was the kookiest book. I'm not going to give you the guy's name. I'm not trying to offend a religion or a person, but just kooky stuff. False prophets making false claims. And the false claim didn't come to pass. And the guy's still preaching to putting out new books. And that's how crazy it is. But something's coming that's larger than that. It's so good. It's so close to being Christian. It's so close to being the Holy Spirit. It's so close to being Jesus. That if possible, it would fool you and me and us. Look at verse 32. He, he gives some more signs. I'm going to bypass a couple of these and grab verse 32 and I'll be done, okay? Just a few more minutes I'll be done. Uh, there it says, uh, now learn a parable. So God now, he, he's talking to his disciples. Give us the sign. And Jesus, is, he's pouring it out. I mean, he, 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 he's cutting loose on them. He's laying it out there. And thank, thank the Lord that Matthew's got a pen and paper. He's writing this stuff down for you and me to read tonight. Uh, but then verse 32. Learn a parable. He's giving it like a command or, or, or a good idea. You better learn this. Learn a parable. A parable is a story alongside of a truth. Parabole. A para means alongside of. In, in Greek. You don't need Greek. Anyway. Uh, is, it means to be alongside of a truth. If you understand this, if you get this, then you'll know the truth. So he says, I want you to learn this. This parable. Learn this parable. And then he talks about a fig tree. When you see, when you see, and there's a lot of stuff, false prophets doing miracles, pulling you know, all this religious uh, stuff out of the hat, so to speak. But when you see the fig tree, look at that. When you see the fig tree, the fig tree is Israel, by the way. If you hadn't studied your scriptures, you can, you can do that. You, you can find all through the scriptures, Israel is likened into a fig tree. Even the story when Jesus came and cursed that fig tree. But I ain't got time to go into that. I'm, 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 on, I'm on a mission. I'm going to get this thing done in just a few more minutes. I'll be done. But when you see it, when you see Israel, when you see the fig tree, when you see the fig tree putting on green leaves, when you see the fig tree getting soft and tender and the little branches are, are full of sap and they're sucking the treasures out of the earth, they're getting all the minerals and such. When you see that, and the leaves are coming, and you see the fruit coming out of the fig tree, when you see that, then you, you, gotta, you gotta know them at the door. You gotta know that it's close. He gives many signs, and he goes on to say in this chapter, when you see these things, that generation should not pass away until all of these things be fulfilled. So here is the parable. Learn it. Learn the parable is watch Israel. Behold, that's just to remove fig tree just for a second, okay? I'm not bringing it back now. I'm not trying to do anything funny to the Bible. Let's just remove it just for a second and say, learn a parable. When you see Israel beginning to blossom and grow and fill the earth with people and fill the earth with commerce and fruit, know that I'm close. Another place, it says, even at the door. I mean, he's real close. And so I think we're really, really, really close to the rapture because I'm seeing all these things going on over here that are uh, a buildup of the fig tree. In my next uh, time I'm with you, I'm going to talk about that. Um, we're going to look at Isaiah 62, Isaiah 64. We're going to look at, um, look at Isaiah 51. We're going to look at, um, uh, oh, my favorite is Isaiah 27, verse 4. I'm going to give a testimony about Isaiah 27, verse 4, when I talked to a Jewish man in Jerusalem about the fig tree. It was a major in the army, and I'm telling him about the fig tree. And then I just blew the story up and just gave him the gospel. And uh, it was it was a, a magic moment, so to speak, in my life. But anyway, uh, so we're going to, in the next few lessons we get together, we're going to look at what's going on with the fig tree. Now, do your homework. Here's your homework. You want some homework? I know you don't, but here's some anyway. Get, get your uh, computer out. Get your Britannica out or uh, some World Book Encyclopedia. Get, get, get a, 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 an encyclopedia from the 50s or 60s if you have it. And look at the land of Israel, the pictures that you'll find there then. And then Google up or Yahoo or Bing up in your computer on the internet pictures of Israel today. 
number one liter of asparagus, number one liter of citrus, number one liter of strawberry and kiwi in Europe and in Russia. We, we're going to talk about the fig tree. Now, when, the, when you see the fig tree, know he's close, okay? But I'll stop right there for, for tonight, and um, I want to encourage you, don't be afraid of prophecies. Don't, 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 don't be afraid to study it. It should be preached in every pulpit just to help us get excited and get confirmed that what God said is true. And I said, last time we were together, uh, I said, uh, if, the old, if the Old Testament people would have known their scripture, they would have been waiting for Jesus in Bethlehem. They'd been waiting for him. But they weren't. Because they were interested in all the other things, the lesser things, and did not know their Bible. Okay? So what we're going to do along the way as we journey here together uh, is we're going to look at what the Bible says. And we're going to give chapter and verse of what we believe. And some things uh, uh, that separates us from the kooks that, that are out there, okay? And they're there. Your pastor knows them. I know a lot of them, too. But we're going to do what God says. And he'll keep you straight. And he'll keep you walk straight. So God bless you. And don't be afraid to read that Bible. Study that Bible. Memorize that Bible. And uh, it'll never let you down. God bless you tonight. Talk to you later.